All right, folks, it's the WC now. I want y'all to drop a like, drop a comment on this video. This is all about edge, but I'm going to take this to a completely different level. Now, I don't drop too many videos about professional wrestlers, um, like from this standpoint of just kind of just appreciation for what the guy has done over the 25 year career um, that he's had. But I have to do that for Edge. And the reason why I have to do it for Edge is because there's so many different levels and so much, so much of a roller coaster he's taking you on to the point where you have to appreciate what the guy has done for you. Like we talking about 25 years, man. I remember him um, debuting and just kind of saying, what the hell is this? We, we, I'm going to go through it in this video, but <laughs> I want, I want you guys to take this ride with me. And I'm going to explain to you guys how Edge has inspired me and how he's inspired a lot of other people. I rarely do this type of video for people, but I'm going to definitely do it for Adam Copeland. He deserves it. Y'all got to understand, when he first came in with the brew, we talked about Christian, Gangrel. Man, I didn't, like, imagine being, <laughs> listen to what I'm imagine being 9, 10 years old. Watching Monday Night Raw and then watching these dudes come out of the damn ground <laughs> with fire, <laughs> with fire surrounding the stage. You're sitting over here like it, it was the it was the damnedest thing I had ever seen at that time. Monday Night Raw and you know just just watching this guy debut, man. It was the damnedest thing, man. I'm telling you, like it it, it was it was goosebumps. It was chilling. Watching the brew come out, man. I mean, it really was. I definitely can't talk about Edge without talking about this moment in which he speared Jeff Hardy basically in half off of the top rope. I mean, you know, when you talk about his career ending probably a little bit shorter than what it probably should have, it's because he took a whole bunch of risk with a whole bunch of risk uh, with a whole bunch of risk takers. And these are moments, I remember watching this at the WrestleMania match, right? This was a WrestleMania match. Watching this and just thinking that him and Jeff Hardy would never, ever be the same after that match. There were so many different spots in that match. And all, like, majority of the really extreme moments that happened during that phase, Edge was directly a part of it. I'm going to be real with y'all. A lot of y'all going going look at me kind of crazy like looking at edge and christian here doesn't pretty deadly look like they're kind of inspired by edge and christian hmm like edge has inspired a lot of people man throughout his career and this whole phase right here definitely was uh, you can see this being this was definitely copied a bunch of times pretty deadly is like you like you guys have been caught man <laughs> you guys have been caught red-handed when you, like I said, when you really sit down and you think about it, Edge has been like in the middle of or directly responsible for a lot of different gimmicks that you see in the WWE today. When you, when you sit back and you really think about it, they start like this was basically the beginning of Kurt Angle with his music, the You Suck thing. Like, this was inspired by Edge, man. <laughs> like, to this day, if you hear Kurt Angle's music, it's You Suck. And that's directly responsible. Edge is di directly responsible for that. The Money in the Bank ladder match as we know it today. This guy, this guy was the first guy, if I'm not mistaken, to cash in and win the WWE Championship. He was the first guy to do it, man. The first guy to do it. Like, most of the stuff that we see on TV today that we know and love, it was inspired by this guy, bro. Like, that's wild to really sit there and think about it. Still to this day, probably one of the most controversial things I've probably seen the WWE do him and Lita in a bed, naked, on national television. Like... At any time, it was one of the most controversial things that you could probably ever think of. Like, this guy had done it. The stuff that he did with Vicky Guerrero, that whole run with, with Vicky Guerrero, Teddy Long, who's there in the background, straight-facing it, and The Undertaker. 
Like, <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like, it's some of the best work that they probably done during that time. When you really sit down and think about it, it was very underrated, but it was, the thing about it was, is that it was repetitive, but it was, it was entertaining when you really, if you had to get a verdict on it, it was very entertaining. Rated RKO here, him and Randy Orton, two guys that like, can you say that they were somewhat in their prime here? Like, I think that, I think that Orton's prime was the stuff that he did with Triple H at WrestleMania. And then Edge's prime was more so, I would say, the stuff that he did with The Undertaker right around WrestleMania time. So this was like pre-prime for both of them. See, now this is where the video changes. Like, because this was, I would believe, I, I believe this was after his WrestleMania match with Alberto Del Rio, if I'm not mistaken, right? He wins that match, and when he wrestled that match, y'all, like, you can definitely see that Edge was hurting during that match. And then the very next night, um, my phone's vibrating. I'm not doing this over. <laughs> the very next night, he had, he announced that the MRI said that he had to retire suddenly. And it was one of those things where um, you could you could definitely see, like, leading up to that WrestleMania match, that there there was something there was something not right with Edge, but you knew that he was gonna be well enough to perform at that WrestleMania match. And even in that WrestleMania match, it looked like he was laboring. It looked like there was stuff that was going on with him. Um and it was kinda uncomfortable to watch it. It wasn't necessarily the greatest match of his career, but he was the he was the the face there. I think he was defending the championship in that match, if I'm not mistaken. So, um it was definitely one of those things where it was heartbreaking to see him having to walk away. And, you know, it, it's this, this kind of, this part of his career was definitely where you, you had to appreciate that not just the person, but just not just the gimmick, but the person and seeing the person evolve right in front of your eyes, seeing, seeing somebody walk away from something that they absolutely loved. Like it, it does something to you. I'm not going to say that I shed a tear that night watching it on Monday Night Raw, but it put things into perspective, even at that age, watching this guy have to walk away. It, it really did something to me, and I think that it moved a lot of people seeing that that night. Walking away from something that you love and then creating something that you love even more. Um, in this life, I haven't experienced that, right? I'm not afraid to say that. But he has, right? And that's an inspiration for me. You know what I'm saying? That's an inspiration for me to even get to that level where you can be mentally strong enough to say, hey, I have to walk away from something I love and I have to find someone or find something as an inspiration. That's Beth Phoenix and their daughter, by the way, right? Or one of their daughters. Um, and then dedicating your life to that as inspiration, as a fuel to get something back. And... We all seen it play out, man. We seen it. So after being told that this guy would never, ever wrestle again. A few years ago at the Royal Rumble, his music hits. And I'm sitting here. I'm watching it, right? I'm watching it in high definition surround sound. And I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> I, I'm sitting, I was literally sitting there on the couch saying, there's no way this guy is in a wrestle. There's just no way this guy's going to wrestle. He comes out and man, I wish I, I wish I could have been in the building just for that reaction to know that this guy had came full circle from walking away from something that he absolutely loved to coming back. And it's inspiration to people like me, because there's a, there's a few things in my life beforehand that I had walked away that I walked away from and coming back to it years upon years upon years later and being able to finish it like this guy is finishing his story to something that Cody talks about a lot in his gimmicks right it's not necessarily a gimmick it's a way of life finishing the story and he was determined to finish his story here and it's a beautiful thing it was a beautiful thing to watch him come back at the Royal Rumble 
perform the way that he did at the Royal Rumble. And it just serves as motivation to anybody out there that just because you have to temporarily walk away from something that you love, an inspiration or a goal or a career, that you can get back. <laughs> you can get back. And, and Adam Copeland, whether he believes that or not, he's, an he's a walking inspiration of that. Like, like people, people have to remove the rest, the professional wrestling aspect of it, and their entertainment value of it. Because at the end of the day, these guys are working hard. These guys and girls are working hard on their bodies. What you see might be predetermined, but they still have to go through the acts. It's, it's not, it, you know, it's a performance art. They're still going through it. They're still putting their bodies on the line in order to facilitate what you see on the screen. So it's not fake. The outcome might be, but the act isn't. <laughs> you understand what I'm trying to say? And this guy has entertained at the highest level possible for so long. He's like a he's like a a, a living inspiration for coming back. And he needed to be thanked then for coming back. I'm gonna thank him now for coming back. Because when I seen him come back, I was like, you know, if this guy could come back from being told that he can't wrestle anymore like what's my excuse <laughs> what's my excuse for not being able to finish what i started and for like forever for, forever for the most part he'll always be a walking example of that let me make sure i end this by saying this i had never heard of anybody saying anything negative about adam copeland in his time in the WWE, I never heard one bad word. <laughs> you understand what I'm trying to say? Like, you know, there's a lot of people that can, you know, that can do the dirt sheets and all this other stuff. I've never heard one bad word about Adam Copeland and his professionalism and his work ethic. I've never heard one bad word, man. This is like, this is damn near because I've been covering this stuff for about, you know, watching him for about, what, I would say about 25 years and covering it intensely for maybe somewhere between 15 to 12 right like i've never heard a bad word like the ultimate professional and this guy is just the epitome he's the epitome of a sports entertainer somebody that i've thoroughly enjoyed watching him whether it's good bad heel bad edge good edge and different edge i don't know what i'm doing edge tweener edge brood edge um lovey dovey edge I'll spear you through a burning table with Mick Foley edge. Um, let, let me make fun of you because I'm the under because you're the Undertaker edge. It's fused with John Cena, like everything, man. Like like, like this guy's career is like 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 it's an inspiration, and I've had fun watching Edge over the last 25 years. And anybody that ever needs inspiration to never give up on something, just just watch a video like this, right? For me talking about somebody like this guy, Adam Copeland, and how his how his career has transcended, how he's been able to entertain me, you know, saying for a good long time, and I've I've enjoyed watching his career, and I've taken personal inspiration from his story to complete the mission, some of the missions myself. Because without stories like Adam Copeland's, like people like me have to, we have to dig down deeper than we probably should. And I'm watching professional wrestling every week, watching this guy every week perform, put his li damn near put his life on the line to, to entertain people like me, and for him to come full circle and have a career this great, and finish the story like he did tonight on the 25th, 25th anniversary of his career. It's truly remarkable. Make sure that you guys drop a like, drop a comment for this commentary about Adam Copeland Edge. Um, the, his match in Toronto against Sheamus Shame, on, let me make sure that I get it right, on the August 18th edition of SmackDown um, 2023. Um, I don't know if that's his last match. It probably should be. He wore blue and white tights. Um, I'm pretty sure he's a Maple Leaf fan, so it is what it is. <laughs> It is what it is. So let me know how you guys feel about this commentary about Edge's career down below. I know it's a long ass video, but I just wanted to explain to people how 
it's not just it's just it's not just about professional wrestling it's about the inspiration it's about the story behind the wrestling that we that we all care about and hopefully someday this guy will see this video man you know what i'm saying like i did i did put some time into it um i shot it straight off my phone like i have been doing and you know people like this guy bro He's inspiration to never give up, man. <laughs> you guys have to understand. He's inspiration to never give up. He didn't give up. He didn't. And he put on a hell of a show not giving up even before then. So let me know how you guys feel down below. It's the WC. And I'm gone, man. Thank you. Thank you, Edge.